This is chili. Um, not this chili. This chili. Oh. Jokes aside, the alignment here in Chile looks like this. Minus 0.5 front toe out for increased turning, since there are a lot of turns, and plus 1.4 toe in at the rear wheels for easier corner drive outs. As for the camber, since the turns here are mostly hairpins, squares, ones and twos, the speed at which you're taking them is kinda slow, so high camber values are not necessary. Minus 1.25 on the front and minus 0.75 on the rear will do the trick here. For the differentials, a higher driving lock is mandatory here. Because as said earlier, there are a lot of turns, so to regain speed as quickly as possible, you need to be able to put the power down. Plus, Chile has another factor that will make you wanna lock those this more, and that is very steep climbs. If you're familiar with off-road trucks, then you know what I'm talking about. So, I'm not recommending values lower than the ones you see here, and you can even go higher if you're okay with a bit more understeer. On the other hand, the braking lock and the preload need a lower lock value, because when descending, a car is more prone to lockups than on level ground. So instead of both wheels locking under braking, taking away your ability to slow down and even steer the car, leave them more open. This way, only the wheel with less traction will lock, allowing the other one to do the hard work. In the damping tab, I've gone with a little more asphalt-like setup here. As you can see, the slow bump is set on the stiffer side as well as the fast bump, with just one click stiffer. The bump division is set just below the medium value, because there are no jumps here, so nothing is gonna slam the car down other than a few bigger crests. This way making the ride feel more linear. Finally, the rebound can be left at zero, because again, the car won't be getting in the air too much on Chile. If your reaction after seeing this is like, what the heck? then don't worry, I will explain everything in the sprint stop. Hey, did you know that Nox has started memberships on his channel? Oh wow, so what? I mean, it has an offer like never seen before. Mm -hmm. No, really, you can ask for customized tuning setups. Wait, what? Yeah, if you sign up as chief engineer, you can tell him the location and the car you're struggling with and he will make you a tuning setup just for you and help you with any other adjustments. No way! Plus, you will get early access to WRC1 and WRC2 setups before they make it to YouTube and a growing collection of tuning setups for various cars in various locations. But this is also included for the engineer level, right? Yes, you're right. So, what what you waiting for? Remember the steep climbs and descents I've talked about in the differentials tab? Well, they affect how the brakes work too. Too much braking pressure will not be beneficial in either case. When descending, there will be a lot more weight on the front wheels, but this won't help because the steeper the road gets, the lower the grip becomes, especially on loose surfaces like gravel. Now, when ascending, the car is already being dragged downwards and slowed by gravity, so in most corners, just a little tap on the brake combined with the engine braking will be enough. For the brake bias, again because of the steep descents, I moved some braking power to the rear wheels as well, compared to the other setups. Finally, here I settled on this value for the handbrake force, because the hairpins are not that tight, so I just want a little bit of rear lock when pulling it, to just give the car some help with the rotation. Again, the same story with the steep climbs and tight corners applies to the gearbox as well. High torque and accelerations are what we're looking for, so we need to set the final drive to a small value of 0.130 and adjust all the gears accordingly. As we move to the higher gears, I left them pretty short, so they produce more torque rather than speed. This is because, aside from one log straight available on only a few tracks in Chile, the rest is a series of corners and steep inclines. But don't worry, you can still get up to 185 km per hour anyways. Finally, as we proceed to the spring stab, let me explain what's going on with all that stiffness. You see, here in Chile, the road surface is very smooth. It's almost like asphalt. No bumps, no jumps, nothing crazy, only smooth dirt and pebbles. Because of this, the ride height can be set pretty low. I've settled on 46mm because there are a ton of cuts you can take everywhere, those are not that smooth, so you need some ground clearance to not hit the underbody. For the spring rate again, just one peep on the softer side to be able to absorb the bumps from the sides of the road mostly. The entire roll bars are softer on the front because these are the wheels that steer the car, so you want them to be more in contact with the road, while on the rear, more on the stiffer side to minimize the body roll. This was the setup for Chile, leave a like, subscribe to my channel, share this video with your friends and family, and maybe buy me a coffee. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, see you on the track, bye bye!